All right, welcome to the action guide for step four, which is determine grade level artifacts. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you, this step is gonna take a lot of time. There is a lot of work to do in this step, and I hope that you've it's been building up to this, that you have been doing all the other things from the other parts of the action guides from the three previous steps. And what we've said before is don't go on unless you've done it, because nothing's gonna make sense. So I hope that you have ordered those books from Amazon and you've kind of looked through them, because in the upcoming lessons, we're gonna be doing actual chapter assignments. I hope that you have uh, been participating in the Nings, and got a quote from Atomic Learning. And it's because, you know, I use Atomic Learning to split myself up, you know, 22 different ways so that um, I can get all this work done. So that I'm not sitting, having to sit down individually with each teacher and say, okay, this is how you can adapt this 21st century lesson. This is how you need to do to make a Ning, those type of things. It is so valuable to what we do that I hope you've gotten a quote back on it so you understand, you know, where it can fit in with the budget in your school. And it's Brad's, you know, lazy way of getting it all done. But it's also the only way that I can comprehend that it gets done. Okay, uh, I've got my notes here and I've also got my slide editor up on the screen so we can kind of review where we're at. Uh, the first thing you need to do is determine your skills priority for your school or your building or your district. And, you know, don't put this out to committee after committee. I mean, maybe bring in a couple of colleagues that you trust and can work with that you respect and you really come up with, I mean, most of this is just logic, which is why you don't want to get too many little fingers in the cake here. So when I looked at it for my elementary school, you know, these are the ones that came up, keyboarding, word processing, presentations, email, and online research. And I think most people will agree with that and maybe add or subtract one or two things. Okay. But you know, I don't have on their spreadsheets. That's going to be done in middle school, okay? It's not a big priority for me. So you've got to look at also the age of your students and say, what is the most important skills these students leave my building with, okay? And put them out into the workforce. And, and we're not talking the 21st century skills because those are going to be all mixed in. So creativity and collaboration, those type of things will all get mixed into it. These are the actual skill sets that are today. Okay, and then also determine what the skills are for your teachers. What, what's been bugging you about what the teachers can and cannot do? And that's really where we came up with this other list saying, well, you know, they've got to know how to do district email. They've got to know how to use atomic learning. They've got to know how to use everything in their, their classroom, those type of things. And that's really our priority. And these things change from year to year. They've got to be very fluid because it's hard to predict. And we try to go as, as broad as possible to make them more universal. So it's not just like a flavor of the month. But, but you've also, every summer, take a look at it and say, you know what? We don't use ePals anymore. Let's cross that off list and use you know, the new XYZ system that, that's replaced it or whatever. So really reevaluate each one every summer so that you are always staying fresh. Okay, so, so that is what you, that's assignment number one. You sit down and you look at both your students and teachers and bring in, like I said, some trusted colleagues and you come up with these priorities, all right? Now let me scroll down here to the other part when it comes to grade level artifacts. Okay, now... Keeping in mind the idea of Bloom's digital taxonomy, which being creating is the highest level of thinking. Also, keeping in mind the six 21st century skills as published by ISTE, that I really, and these also are very fluid, so they change from year to year. But these are the things that we work on in our building, and these are the things the students work on almost for the year. They work towards these these culminating activities. And sometimes we, we cut ourselves off short because the kids love to do big projects and then they wanna share it with the world. And sometimes they just share it with their teacher. Well, I gotta tell you, these things are shared with the world. Okay, so if you want to see some of these things, I've got a link down in resources for the website that showcases my students' work and it's called hightechelementaryschool.com. Go there and check out their podcasting and those type of things because we're going to start putting more and more of this online and you're going to be blown away by the things these kids are able to do. So, so go check that out. And so this is what we've really come up with, with working, you know, kind of kind of with the teachers, you know, and uh, it's not that I want to force this on them, but, you know, the teachers don't know the tech stuff like you and I know it. So, you know, and sometimes they get nervous, like, you know, wait a minute, you want me to do a documentary video? Well, the thing is, what we do is we, we take out the old assessment idea. So, so maybe they are going to study the Renaissance. And the old way was for them to take a test. Well, we take that part out. We say, well, let's add a new assessment in there. Let's have them do a documentary video on the Renaissance. And here's the rubric you can follow. I'll take care of the boot camp that'll train them how to use the little inexpensive video cameras. And we can you know do all this and it's great. 
and it ends up the teachers love it, the students love it. It is unbelievable and it's just great to do. So, so that's the second part and it's a lot of work to do, but you've got to sit down and say, okay, what is age appropriate and what is going to make it fun for the students to want to do, easy for the teachers to be able to take care of and manage, and also is affordable for your building. I mean, you got to look at that as well. And so those are the things you got to look at saying, okay, what each, what is the big culminating event or the digital artifact for each grade to make? Okay. So that's, that's the two big parts to the action guide. Now there are other things in here that I want you to do. And let me just refer to my notes here. Um, I'm going to have a couple of blogs listed in here that I want you to bookmark and start to follow. Okay, and so those are listed just down in the um, action guide part, as well as two videos I want you to go see, and they're kind of they kind of get you pumped up a little bit. Maybe you've seen these before. There, you know, there's some pretty good propaganda about uh, bringing technology into schools, and some pretty interesting things to kind of get you going. So, so go take a look at that. There's a couple other things I'm going to move those over to maybe another day uh, or another step, so then you're not too overwhelmed with what you got going on right here. So, uh, so get that done. Figure out your skills priorities figure out your grade level artifacts, and then check out these blogs and these two videos, and that should probably keep you busy. So I will see you in step five.